Welcome to the Self-Safe Test Preparation. This is the Self-Safe Manager Practice Test 4. We have gathered another 45 questions with explained answers from the Self-Safe exam providers. So let's get started. Question 1. Which of the following is not present in a situation where a foodborne illness is considered an outbreak? A. Confirmation by a laboratory analysis. B. An employee completes an incident report. C. State and local regulatory authorities have conducted an investigation. D. Two or more individuals experience the same symptoms after ingesting the same food. And the correct answer is option B, an employee completes an incident report. A foodborne illness becomes an outbreak when two or more people experience the same symptoms from the same food. An investigation is done by state and local regulatory authorities and the outbreak has been confirmed via laboratory analysis question 2 which of the following best represents a food that will be at the most risk for cross contamination a an egg roll from the buffet b a grilled chicken breast over rice c a ball of chili from the dinner menu d a cream brulee from the desert menu and the correct answer is option a an egg roll from the buffet self-service areas can become easily contaminated foods should be protected labeled and kept at a proper temperature staff should monitor guests at self-service areas because pathogens like norovirus can be easily transferred by contaminated guests, reuse plates, and or reuse utensils. Question 3. Which of the following actions will require prevention controls to be put in place according to the FDA's public health interventions? A. Bare hand contact with a donut. B. Glove hand contact with a donut c using metal tongs when handling a donut d using a dilly sheet when handling a donut and the correct answer is option a bare hand contact with a donut a donut is a ready to eat food the fda's public health intervention state controlling hands as a vehicle of contamination as one of the most common foodborne illness risk factors. Controls must be in place to avoid bare hand contact with RTE foods such as requiring the use of tongs, gloves or deli sheets when handling. Question 4. Why are the elderly considered an at-risk population? A. Elderly customers move more slowly. B. Elderly customers have a harder time chewing. C. Elderly customers have weaker immune systems. D. Elderly customers have eaten fewer types of foods. And the correct answer is option C. Elderly customers have weaker immune systems. Immune systems weaken with age and the immune system is the body's natural defense against illness. A weaker immune system means an increased chance of contacting a foodborne illness. Question 5. Which of the following choices is not considered a cost of foodborne illness to a business? A. Lowered staff morale. B. Increased supplier bills. C. Negative media exposure. D. Increased insurance premiums.
And the correct answer is option B, increased supplier bills. Although it does not affect supplier bills, football illness at an operation can result in loss of customers and in turn sales. Loss of reputation, negative media exposure, lowered staff morale, lawsuits and legal fees. Staff missing work, increased insurance premiums and the need for staff retraining. This can cost the operation thousands of dollars, meaning food service operations must be diligent in minimizing foodborne illness. Question 6. A customer has reported dental damage and choking after eating at your restaurant. These are symptoms of what type of contamination? A. Physical contamination B. Chemical contamination C. Biological contamination D. Time temperature abuse And the correct answer is Option A. Physical contamination Physical contamination can result in mild to fatal injuries that could include cuts, dental damage, choking, bleeding, and pain. Question 7. Which of the following is not one of the five most common mistakes or risk factors that lead to unsafe food? A. Using outdated equipment. B. Practicing poor personal hygiene. C. Holding food at the wrong temperature. D. Purchasing food from an unsafe supplier. And the correct answer is option A. Using outdated equipment. Food can easily become unsafe. And the five most common mistakes or risk factors that lead to foodborne illness are purchasing from an unsafe source. Not cooking food correctly, not holding food at the correct temperature, using contaminated equipment, and having poor personal hygiene. Question 8 Which of the following is a way to track the temperature of deliveries? A. Time temperature hotline. B. Time temperature register. C. Time temperature regulator. D. Time temperature indicator. And the correct answer is option D. Time temperature indicator. A time temperature indicator is a tag suppliers can attach to packaging. If time temperature abuse occurs, the irreversible color change indicator will show it. Question 9. A tall pot of cooked rice is left to cool on the counter. You, as manager, take corrective action and advise your employee to divide the rice into shallow containers and use an ice bath to cool. What should you do next? A. Throw out the rice. B. Implement temperature locks. C. Retrain your staff on safe cooling. D. Demote the employee to dish duty. And the correct answer is option C. Retrain your staff on safe cooling. Managers must actively control foodborne illness risk factors, which includes identifying risk, monitoring, corrective action, management oversight, training, and re-evaluation. Managers should ensure the staff are trained on procedures such as proper cooling and retrain whenever necessary. Question 10. Which of the following actions best represents foodborne illness prevention? A. Washing hands. B. Measuring viruses. C. Using farm fresh organic ingredients. D. Having access to the latest equipment. And the correct answer is option A. Washing hands.
practicing good personal hygiene and avoiding cross contamination by washing hands is a best practice for preventing food borne illness question 11 which of the following is a best practice when leaving the bathroom after washing hands a use your apron to open the door b use a paper towel to open the door c open the door by using your non dominant hand d wait for someone else to come in so you don't have to touch the door handle and the correct answer is option b use a paper towel to open the door you should always use a paper towel to open the door to avoid bare hand contact with the door handle you should never wear any prawn into the bathroom question 12 at every step of a food's path through your facility blank can contaminate it a chemicals b suppliers c food handlers d temperature abuse and the correct answer is option c food handlers Food handlers interact with food at every step of the flow of food and can contaminate it without even realizing. For example, touching your face while chopping lettuce, even when you appear to be healthy, could make a customer sick. Managers must be aware of all the ways food handlers might contaminate food to proactively control them. Question 13. Which of the following is the best place to store an ice scoop when not in use? A. Inside the machine. B. On top of the machine. C. Outside of the machine in a drawer. D. Outside the machine in a covered holder. And the correct answer is option D. Outside the machine in a covered holder. Older. Ice scoops or tongs must always be used to get ice and never a glass or your bare hands. The glass may chip or break and your hands could be contaminated. The best storage choice provided is outside the machine in a designated covered holder to protect against cross contamination. Question 14. Which of the following is the best way to prevent foodborne illness that is caused by a bacteria? A. Controlling chemical storage. B. Controlling personal hygiene. C. Controlling time temperature abuse. D. Controlling the use of packaged condiments. And the correct answer is option C, controlling time temperature abuse. Bacteria are found almost everywhere and time temperature abuse allows bacteria to grow to unsafe levels and thrive, causing unsafe food. Question 15. Which of the following is the best way to prevent foodborne illness from viruses? A. Controlling personal hygiene, B. Controlling chemical storage, C. Controlling training programs, D. Controlling time temperature abuse. And the correct answer is option A. Controlling personal hygiene. Viruses are carried by people and animals and required a living host. They don't grow in food but can be transferred through food and through vomit or fecal particles nearby or left in hands. Question 16. Which of the following is not a concern regarding parasites? A. They are found in seafood. B. They are found in wild mushrooms. C. They need a host to live. 
and reproduce. D. Cooking food to an internal temperature is important. And the correct answer is option B. They are found in wild mushrooms. Parasites require a host to live and reproduce, and cooking food to the required internal temperature is important to prevent them. But they are commonly associated with seafood, wild game and food processed with contaminated water. Question 17. What is most important when preventing foodborne illness from biological toxins? A. Keep commonly toxin associated foods frozen until cooking. B. Purchase commonly toxin associated foods from approved sources. C. Cook commonly toxin associated foods to the required internal temperature. D. Practice good personal hygiene when handling commonly toxin associated foods. And the correct answer is option B. Purchase commonly toxin associated foods from approved sources. Toxins can't be destroyed by cooking or freezing. So the most important way to prevent a toxin related foodborne illness is to purchase commonly associated foods from approved reputable sources. Commonly associated foods are certain plants, mushrooms and seafood. Time temperature control is also important when handling the raw seafood. Question 18. A wrapped container of prepared chicken salad should be kept on what letter shelf in a five shelf cooler? A being top and E being bottom. A, E, B, C, C, A, D, B. The correct answer is option C, A. Cooler Refrigerated storage has a designated shelves to keep foods separate and to prevent the cross contamination of RTE foods by other foods dripping juices. Storage order is depicted top to bottom. RTE foods should always be stored separately or on top. Then seafood, whole cuts of beef and pork, ground meat and ground fish, and whole or ground poultry on the bottom. Chicken salad is a ready to eat food and should be stored on shelf A or the top shelf of cooler storage. Question 19. A pan of haddock fillets are taken from the freezer to thaw in the cooler. They are wrapped and placed on what shelf in a five shelf cooler? A being top and E being bottom. And the options are A, E, B, C, C, B, D, B. And the correct answer is option C, B. Cooler has designated shelves to keep foods separate and to prevent cross contamination storage order is depicted top to bottom rte food should always be stored separately or on top then seafood whole cuts or beef or pork ground meat and ground fish and whole or ground poultry on the bottom haddock fillets should be stored on shelf b of cooler storage in this scenario. Question 20. Where are you most likely to find a maximum registering thermometer? A. Delivery truck. B. Freezer storage. C. Dishwashing machine. D. At delivery inspection. And the correct answer is option C, dishwashing machine. 
A maximum registering thermometer indicates the highest temperature reached during use where temperature readings can't be continuously done. This type of thermometer works well for checking the final rinse temperature and dish machines. Question 21. What is the last step in the flow of food? A. Reheating. B. Cooking. C. Holding. D. Serving. And the correct answer is option D. Serving. Service is the final step in the flow of food. Foods are still at risk for contamination during this step. So food handlers and service staff must know how to serve food safely. Question 22. A customer has become sick within minutes of eating, experiencing vomiting and diarrhea. What is most likely the cause? A. Stress. B. Chemical contamination. C. Physical contamination. D. Time temperature abuse. And the correct answer is option B. Chemical contamination. Chemical contamination symptoms vary depending on the chemical consumed, but most illnesses occur within minutes. Vomiting and diarrhea are typical. Cleaners, sanitizers, polishes, machine lubricants, and pesticides that come into contact with food can cause chemical contamination, as well as items made from pewter, copper, zinc, and some painted pottery. This is especially true when acidic foods like tomatoes are held in containers made from those materials. Question 23. How much of a thermistor probe must be inserted into a food item to get an accurate reading? A. Insert the entire probe. B. Insert two-thirds of the probe. C. Insert just the tip of the probe. D. Insert to the middle of the probe. And the correct answer is option C. Insert just the tip of the probe. Thermocouples and thermistors are common thermometer types used in food service operations and both have sensing areas and the tip of the probe. They don't have to be inserted as far into a food as a biometallic stem thermometer, making them good for both thick and thin food. Question 24. Which of the following thermometers takes the temperature of surfaces? A. Infrared. B. Air probe. C. Thermocouple. D. Biometallic stem. And the correct answer is option A. Infrared. Infrared thermometers measure food and equipment surface temperature without touching them, meaning less chance for cross-contamination and are quick and easy to use. However, they don't measure the internal temperature of food like thermocouples or biometallic stem thermometers and can't measure air temperatures like an air probe. Question 25 Mark begins working with TCS ingredients at 2 p.m. He has until blank at maximum to finish and or return the ingredients to cooler storage before they must be discarded. A. 4 p.m. B. 5 p.m. C. 6 p.m. D. 8 p.m. And the correct answer is option C. 6 p.m. To control fat tom conditions, which includes time and temperature, you must keep TCS foods out of the temperature danger zone and control how long food is exposed to it. If food is in the T 
TDZ range for four hours or longer, we must discard it. Mark must discard these ingredients at 6 p.m. if they are still exposed to the TDZ. Question 26. What is the first step in the flow of food? A. Purchasing. B. Procedures. C. Preparation. D. Inspections. And the correct answer is option A. Purchasing. To ensure you start the flow of food safely, you must purchase food from reputable approved suppliers that have been inspected and can show their inspection report and meet all applicable laws at the local, state and federal level. Question 27. Shell X can be received at a maximum air temperature of blank degrees Fahrenheit or lower. A. 45. B. 48. C. 50. D. 51. And the correct answer is option A, 45. Shell X can be received at an air temperature of 45 degrees Fahrenheit or lower to be considered safe. Question 28. Which common risk factor is at fault when frozen boxes have leak stains? A. Poor hygiene. B. Deliberate tampering. C. Time temperature abuse. D. Ordering from unsafe sources. And the correct answer is option C. Time temperature abuse. Leaks and our stains on boxes of frozen foods is a sign of time temperature abuse. Question 29. In cooler storage, storing raw chicken legs above the fresh Silvery use in salads is an example of A. Cross contact, B. Cross contamination, C. Time temperature abuse, D. Temperature danger zone. And the correct answer is option B. Cross contamination. Storing any type of raw poultry, seafood, or meat above a fresh ingredient. That will be served RTE like this celery will cause cross contamination. Juices from other items could drip onto ready to eat foods, so they must always be stored separately or above raw poultry, seafood, and or meat items. Question 30 As an exception, ground meat and ground fish. May be stored on a shelf directly above blank as long as packaging keeps pathogens and chemicals out and does not leak. A. Seafood. B. Ready to eat foods. C. Whole and ground poultry. D. Whole cuts of beef and pork. And the correct answer is option D. Whole cuts of beef and pork. Ground meat and ground seafood can be stored above whole cuts of beef and pork as long as you make sure the packaging keeps pathogens and chemicals out and does not leak. Question 31. Why should you include customer advisories on your menu? A. To emphasize the freshness of your ingredients. B. To highlight your use of safe and sanitary serving practices. C. To advise customers your ingredients are organic and pesticide free. D. To inform that undercooked or raw tissues foods pose an increased risk. And the correct answer is option D. To inform that undercooked or raw tissues foods pose an increased risk. Some menu items may include raw or undercooked TCS ingredients, such as animals products. If so, you must note it 
on your menu next to the items to advise customers of the increased risk of foodborne illness. You may also provide the information by brochure, sign, or table 10. Question 32. Cleaning and sanitizing between food preparation helps to prevent which common risk factor? A. Poor hygiene. B. Cross contamination. C. Time temperature abuse. D. Bare hand contact with TCS ingredients. And the correct answer is option B. Cross contamination. Cleaning and sanitizing your work area and the tools used between prep helps to prevent cross-contamination. Question 33. Jane has thawed food items in the microwave. What should she do now? A. Place them in a food-safe container. B. Chop them immediately to retain moisture. C. Cook them immediately in a conventional way. D. Cover them and let them rest for up to 20 minutes. And the correct answer is option C. Cook them immediately in a conventional way. You can thaw food in a microwave if it's going to be cooked immediately after thawing. The food must then be cooked in a conventional way such as in an oven. Once thawed. Question 34. When thawing under running water, never let the food get above blank degrees Fahrenheit for longer than 4 hours total. A. 41. B. 45. C. 50. D. 70. And the correct answer is option A. 41. Never let the temperature of food thawing and the running water rise above 41 degrees Fahrenheit for longer than 4 hours, including the time it takes to thaw the food item and prep or cool it. Question 35. Mandy prepared the egg salad for tomorrow's lunch menu. She left the container out while washing and sanitizing her tools back at the dish sink. This is blank. A. Cross contact. B. Cross contamination. C. Time temperature abuse. D. Improper cleaning and sanitizing. And the correct answer is option C. Time temperature abuse. Leaving a container of prepared egg salad out while you complete other tasks could lead to time temperature abuse. The egg salad should not be out longer than absolutely necessary. Question 36. Scott takes frozen fish from the freezer and places it into a clean and sanitized container. He puts the container into a clean and Sanitized prep sink. He fills the container with 40 degree Fahrenheit water, covering the fish, turns the water off, and leaves the fish to thaw for no longer than 3 hours. What went wrong? A. He turned the water off. B. He didn't specify the type of container. C. He used water. It was not cold enough. D. He left the fish under the water for too long. And the correct answer is option A. He turned the water off. When thawing food submerged under water, the water must continue running and the flow must be strong enough to wash loose bits of the food into the drain. Question 37. You serve a high risk population at a nursing home where you prepare meals. You are only able to get unpasteurized shell eggs for your delivery this week. Which item will you have to remove from your menu? A. 
lemon cake b spinach quiche c cheese omelets d house made scissor dressing and the correct answer is option d house made scissor dressing if your facility mainly serves high risk populations such as elderly individuals in a nursing home use pasteurized eggs or egg products when serving dishes that are raw or need little to no cooking like caesar salad dressing hollandaise sauce tiramisu and hummus unpasteurized shell eggs may be used if the menu item will be cooked through all the way like an omelet frittata quiche or cake Question 38. Your restaurant has a breakfast buffet with 10 items. How many labels should the buffet have? A. 5 B. 10 C. 12 D. 20 And the correct answer is option B. 10 Self-service area should have a label for each item on the buffet. Question 39. This storage area has a maximum temperature of 41 degrees Fahrenheit. What type of storage is it? A. A pantry. B. A cooler. C. A freezer. D. A chemical storage area. And the correct answer is option B. A cooler. Cooler or refrigerated storage must have a maximum cold storage temperature of 41 degrees fahrenheit to keep food safe from time temperature abuse question 40 storing too many items in a cooler or freezer prevents good plank and the options are a airflow b storage c rotation d sanitation the correct answer is option A, air flow. Overloaded coolers and freezers prevent good air flow and make the cooling units work harder to stay cold. Opening the cooler and freezer door frequently also affects food safety because it lets warmer air inside. Question 41. Which of the following statements is not true of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. A. It's the minimum holding temperature of hot foods. B. It's the minimum receiving temperature of hot foods. C. It's the maximum temperature to reach when reheating TCS foods. D. It's the minimum cooking temperature to reach for beans that will be hot held. And the correct answer is option C. It's the maximum temperature to reach when reheating TCS foods. When reheating TCS foods, they must reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit and hold for 15 seconds to be safe. Commercially processed and packaged RTE foods are reheated to an internal temperature of at least 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Question 42. When are you not allowed to hold TCS foods without temperature control? A. If you are serving them hot. B. If you are serving them cold. C. If you are serving mostly reheated items. D. If you serve mostly high risk populations. And the correct answer is option D, if you serve mostly high-risk populations. If you serve a majority high-risk population at your facility, you are not permitted to hold TCS foods without temperature control. Question 43. Which of the following foods can be handled with bare hands? A. Hot dog buns. B. Frozen 
French fries. C. Fresh cooked French fries. D. Slices of unwrapped processed cheese. And the correct answer is option B. Frozen French fries. Ready to eat foods must never be held with bare hands. Frozen French fries may be handled with bare hands before cooking, but once cooked, they become a RTE food. Any food that requires no further cooking is a RTE food. Question 44 What does NSF International create? A. Corrective action plans. B. Temperature control devices. C. Food safe sanitation standards. D. Food safe equipment standards. And the correct answer is option D. Food safe equipment standards. Food service equipment that comes into contact with food must meet certain standards. NSF International creates these national standards and is accredited by the American National Standard Institute. These standards require food equipment to be non absorbent, smooth, and resistant to corrosion. Question 45 The manager's responsibility to actively control common risk factors for foodborne illness is known as A. Active managerial control b active management center c management safety systems d hazard analysis control points and the correct answer is option a active managerial control active managerial control is proactive as opposed to reactive Anticipating and planning for common risk factors. Safe purchasing, proper cooking, proper holding, contaminated equipment and hygiene, as well as other risk factors for foodborne illness. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to share it with your family and friends.